So in order to get into performance measures, we need to go over how we actually measure the return on assets, which is pretty straightforward. So we'll have a look at how we measure return over a single period of time, and then how we actually average the return over multiple periods. So for measuring the return over a single period, we have a couple of options. The first of which is our discrete return. So this is the most simple case. Uh, basically we say that the value of our asset at time t, so you could sort of consider this the price, is equal to the value at the time before it, so at t minus 1, multiplied by 1 plus the rate of return for that time period. And notice we have the subscript t, which is corresponding to the value at the end of the period, not before. And so we just expand this out and you get v to the t minus 1 plus v to the t minus 1 rt. And if you just rearrange that, you get that the rate is equal to this fraction. So it's the difference between the values at each time period divided by the initial value. So to get it in sort of a percentage terms. So this is our most simple way of measuring return over one period. And what this is basically equivalent to is saying that we have our value at our previous time period and then the value of our asset actually stays sort of constant throughout the time period and then right at the end we instantly receive interest proportional to our previous amount. So this is what this is basically saying is that right at the end we receive this sort of R percent interest. Our second option is continuous return. So this is saying instead of assuming that we have kind of a constant value and then we instantly receive some amount at the end, we say, which is a little bit more realistic, that over time the value is sort of constantly increasing. Instead of it just going up instantaneously, it's steadily going up. So we're going to actually start out by taking a similar approach, or well, pretty much the same approach as we did with the discrete return. So we'll say that we've got our previous root, our previous return. We multiply it by one plus. We'll just put R there. But just imagine, imagine that we do not want to say that the interest kicks in over one period. What if we were to say that the interest kicked in over two periods? What we would then do is we would take half of this rate and we would say that we get that, we multiply it by 1 plus r over 2 and then we would multiply it again by 1 plus r over 2 saying that this is your initial amount, this times that the first time gives you how much you've got after it kicks in the first time and then you multiply it by 1 plus r over 2 again to give you the amount you've got when interest kicks in the second time. And if we were to say that interest kicks in three times over the single period, then we would divide the rate by three, and we would take this to the power of three, because you'd say multiply by one plus r over three first time, then multiply it again, and then multiply it again. So we generalize this out. We say one plus r over n to the power of n. And so this is saying that n times we receive interest, which is one nth of the rate that is applicable to the entire time period. You know, think of it in terms of if this were an annual rate, we say over one year, we take the annual rate divided by n and we say, you know, for each one over n years, we get this much. The last step we have to take in order to make this continuous, because so far it's still discrete, we've just broken it down into multiple time periods instead of one, to make it continuous, we have to take the limit of this as n goes to infinity. So we're breaking it down theoretically into an infinite number of parts. So interest is being added every single instant. And so what on earth does this become? It turns out that this is equal to e to the power of rt. 
I should add that here. Actually, there's a T subscript in there. So the limit of 1 plus r over n to the power of n as n goes to infinity is equal to e to the rt. That's sort of by definition. So once again, we just do a little bit of rearranging here, and you've got that e to the rt is equal to this fraction. And then by definition, you can say that the rate is equal to the log of that fraction. So that's just by the definition of a log, if e to the rt is equal to that, then rt is equal to the log of that. So now, this is the last thing we have to look at in this video. So what are our options for taking the average return over multiple periods? We've got two options, the first of which is the arithmetic average. You'd have to be really familiar with this by now. This is what you would probably just consider to be the average. It's just taking the sum of all the rates and then dividing by the number of rates. So that's what you would be familiar with when you hear the term average, you would probably think of that. But then we have another type of average, which is the geometric average. And in this one, we are multiplying one plus the rate for all of the rates, and then we're taking it to the power of 1 over t. So this is effectively saying, assuming we've got sort of a compounding of interest kind of effect going on, where after the first year, you know, when you get interest in the second year, you get interest not only on your initial amount, but also on the interest you received previously. If we keep compounding like that over all of the years, then what rate do we need such that if the rate remained constant over all that time and it once again did compound, then yeah, what rate would give us the same sort of total return? So while this one doesn't account for the kind of compounding effect, it just sort of assumes that all of the, yeah, it just takes the average of the rates as they are, this one accounts for compounding. And this is just an alternative way of expressing that, maybe a little easier to see. These two are the exact same thing. And so in the following video, we'll have a look at actually how the choice of which averaging method we use is related to our choice of which single period return measure we use. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.